Robert Jackson for the retirement of review of two soldiers and graduation of companies Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo from the 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment, 193rd Infantry Brigade. Please stand for the invocation given by Chaplain Laskowski. successfully completes the difficult period of training, far fewer are able to accept the challenges and difficulties that come with the life of a career soldier. But those in formation today represent disciplined, motivated, physically fit soldiers who exemplify the Army's seven core values. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They are imbued with the warrior ethos and display the tenets of putting the mission first, never accepting defeat, never quitting, and never leaving behind a fallen comrade. This is an important day, and these soldiers can take great pride in their accomplishments. To the parents, families, and friends of these soldiers, Fort Jackson extends a very warm and sincere welcome. We are justifiably proud of our retirees' lifelong dedication to our nation and are truly honored that the next generation standing on this field have chosen to join our ranks. Please direct your attention to the left of the, of the formation. The units marching today, from your left to right, are the 282nd Army Band, led by First Sergeant David Newcomb, graduating soldiers from Company Alpha, Bravo, the Battalion Color Guard, and graduating soldiers from Companies Charlie, Delta, and Echo. Identified by their distinctive headgear are the drill sergeants. These dedicated non-commissioned officers form the backbone of the Army's training center system, selected based on their professional competence leadership ability, and years of service. 
These men and women undergo intensive training to earn the right to wear their distinctive hat and insignia. With the drill sergeant hat goes the important responsibility of molding civilian men and women into soldiers. The commander of troops for today's ceremony is Major Obadako, who serves as the executive officer for the 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment. He and the battalion staff are positioned on the field. The reviewing officer for today's graduation is the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Hoprich. On his left is Command Sergeant Major Henderson, the battalion's senior non-commissioned officer, master trainer, and principal advisor to the commander. The commander of troops will now bring forward the colors and persons to be honored. Competence and commitment are the hallmarks of professionalism. These soldiers and drill sergeants coming forward will be recognized for their excellence in training and duty performance and serve as examples to all. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem. It is appropriate for soldiers in uniform and all armed forces veterans to salute the American flag. We ask our civilian guests to please remove their headgear and place their right hand over their hearts as our national anthem is played. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness the retirement of a lifelong soldier. All soldiers begin their journey by graduating from basic combat training. Over the years, there have been many changes to how the Army conducts basic training. However, many things remain the same. It was during basic training that these two soldiers were first introduced to the Army values. It is where they learned the importance of teamwork and that the Army truly is a family. That sense of team and Army family is still embedded in what is done here today. Over 39 years ago, these soldiers took the same oath to defend the nation that your loved ones on the field have taken. We salute these great soldiers as they pass the torch of freedom along to the newest generation of soldiers, your loved ones standing on the field today. A certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States is presented to those retiring today. It reads, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation for your contribution of honorable service to our country. You have helped to maintain the security of the nation during critical times in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of the military service. I trust that in the coming years, you will maintain an active interest in the armed forces and the purpose for which you served. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. My best wishes to you for happiness and success in the future. A certificate of retirement from the Chief of Staff, United States Army, is also presented to those retiring today. And to the spouses of today's retirees, the Chief of Staff, United States Army, sends the following certificate. It reads, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from active status with the United States Army, you have earned our grateful appreciation for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and, and understanding helped to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. At this time, Brigadier General, and Command Sar Ma Brigadier General Kelly and Command Sar Major o Worth will recognize our retirees for their service to the United States Army. Sergeant First Class Carolyn Irwin, having served honorably for 24 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 August 2023. Sergeant First Class Irwin entered active duty in Indianapolis, Indiana, and will reside in Columbia, South Carolina upon retirement. Her fondest professional achievement was having the, having the opportunity to serve her country as a leader, a drill sergeant, and as an instructor. She thoroughly enjoyed teaching and training soldiers throughout her career. The nation salutes Carolyn Irwin, Sergeant First Class, United States Army, retired. Sergeant First Class Marquita Cooper, having served honorably for 15 years of service, is placed on the retirement list effective 1 May 2023. Sergeant First Class Cooper entered active duty in Miami, Florida, and will reside in Columbia, South Carolina upon retirement. Her fondest professional achievement was being a drill sergeant and seeing civilians turn into soldiers. The nation salutes. Marquita Cooper, Sergeant First Class, United States Army, retired. Please join me in another round of applause for our retirees and their families. Although newly retired, they will always be a part of our Army family. The soldiers most responsible for the training of these soldiers are the drill sergeants who are carefully selected by the Department of the Army. The drill sergeant campaign hat and badge have been a stoic symbol of professionalism and pride since 1962. At this time, the drill sergeant of the cycle from Echo Company, 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment, 
Drill Sergeant Suddeth, will recite the Drill Sergeant Creed. We ask that all Drill Sergeants, past and present, please stand for the reciting of the Drill Sergeant Creed. I am a Drill Sergeant. I will assist each individual in their efforts to become a highly motivated, well-disciplined, physically and mentally fit soldier capable of defeating any enemy on today's modern battlefield. I will instill pride in all I train, pride in self, in the army, and in country. I will insist that each soldier meets and maintains the army's standards of military bearing and courtesy, consistent with the highest traditions of the U.S. Army. I will lead by example, never requiring a soldier to attempt any task I will not do myself. But first, last, and always, I am an American soldier, sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. I am a drill sergeant. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Colonel Hoprich and Command Sergeant Major Henderson will now present the awards. The outstanding Drill Sergeant of the Cycle for 260th Infantry Battalion is Drill Sergeant Suddeth from Hagerstown, Maryland. The soldier leader of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private Isabella Ramirez from the Colony, Texas. The soldier of the cycle for Alpha Company is Private Aidan Mullen from Gothenburg, Nebraska. The soldier leader of the cycle for Bravo Company is Private First Class Mitchell Olson from West Point, Utah. The soldier of the cycle for Bravo Company is Specialist Jun Su Lee from Irvine, California. The soldier leader of the cycle for Charlie Company is Private Jaden Parada from Hyde Park, New York. The soldier of the cycle for Charlie Company is Specialist Thomas Bittner from Greenville, Tennessee. The soldier leader of the cycle for Delta Company is Specialist Ivy Glidden from St. Cloud, Minnesota. The soldier of the cycle for Delta Company is Specialist John Cartzenel from Elkhorn, Wisconsin. The soldier leader of the cycle for Echo Company is Specialist Nathaniel Pettit from New York City, New York. The soldier of the cycle for Echo Company is Private Jordan Wishart from Mineola, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Hoprich. Good morning. Brigadier General Kelly, Colonel and Mrs. White, Command Sergeant Major Word, 
Mr. Abdul Harimi, former governor of Logar and Herat provinces in Afghanistan, Salam Alaikum. Distinguished guests, supporting staff and cadre, friends, families present, and those that are literally turning in, tuning in from all around the world. Thank you for being here for today's ceremony. And welcome to your soldier's graduation. Since 1917, Fort Jackson has helped forge America's warrior class as it transforms civilians into disciplined, competent, professional soldiers. In short, Fort Jackson is responsible for manufacturing tomorrow's heroes, and it produces them at a rate of more than 48,000 soldiers per year, which is more than half of the Army's requirement. That is why we at Fort Jackson proudly proclaim that victory truly starts here. Today, that tradition continues as we welcome 754 of America's newest defenders of freedom into our ranks and mark the graduation from basic combat training. Throughout time, the conduct of war has changed and will continue to change. But through it all, the one constant that remains is people. We are a people business. And we're in the business of producing and continuing to develop the best people to be our soldiers, non-commissioned officers, and commissioned officers. I'm very proud to be part of that, and I promise you that our future is in good hands with those that are standing on this field today. And that said, we, yeah. and that said, we must recognize that our present is shaped by our past. And I want to start by recognizing our veterans and our retirees. We just witnessed the retirement of two fine soldiers who have a combined 39 years in the military. Sergeant First Class Irwin and Sergeant First Class Cooper, thank you for your service to our military. We are honored that you can celebrate your retirement at a ceremony that marks the beginning for these young soldiers. We are a free nation because of the sacrifices you have made and because of the American service members who have fought for and continue to fight for our freedoms. Can all of our veterans and retirees stand and be recognized? Out on the field with your soldiers is the 282nd Band. We have the privilege of having one of the best bands in the Army right here on our post, and they always bring a wonderful touch of class to this ceremony. So please join me in a round of applause for the band. So the next group of individuals I'd like to recognize are the cadre. And most importantly, the drill sergeants that transformed your loved ones from a civilian into a soldier. Your soldiers will forget some of their peers, some of their experiences will fade away, but they, they most certainly won't remember what I'm saying here today. But they will remember the names of their drill sergeants. NCOs like Drill Sergeant Santos, Hoffman, Fuller, Sheely, and Sutton. Years from now, they will tell you that they could not have made it through basic combat training without their drill sergeant. Drill sergeants are specially selected from across the Army and undergo rigorous training at the Drill Sergeant Academy. Daily, they display the attributes of a soldier and demonstrate the Army values, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. They have spent the last 10 weeks working very hard to ensure that your soldiers made it through basic combat training with the tools to be successful at their first unit of assignment. Working alongside the drill sergeants, we have a host of company commanders and first sergeants, platoon leaders, support cadre, and staff daily moving mountains in support of our mission. To the families, teachers, coaches, mentors, and friends watching this ceremony today, either here live or virtually, thank you. Thank you for your support and your trust in us to protect your loved ones. They would not be here without you. And what an amazing group they are. The resilience this class has shown is a testament to their strength and maturity. 
Further, these soldiers speak to the richness and diversity that constitutes the strength of our nation since its beginning 246 years ago. The graduating soldiers who are standing on the field before you today are quite a diverse group. And they come from some pretty interesting jobs, too. Did you know that some of these soldiers used to be lawyers, librarians, a trauma nurse in East LA, a Chuck E. Cheese mouse, a dairy farmer, a professional soccer player, and one was even a commercial crab fisherman. But now, we have artillery specialists, communication specialists, intelligence specialists, maintainers, feelers, cooks, supply specialists, mechanics, and many other specialties in this formation. Here's some other interesting facts about this class. The youngest is 17. The oldest is 46. They come from 52 states and territories, five different countries. They speak 15 different languages. Many soldiers in this formation have college degrees, 18 with associates, 46 with bachelors, and 11 with masters. And on top of that, we just had six soldiers who conducted the oath of naturalization yesterday, and now have become American citizens. Yet despite their unique and diverse backgrounds, what unites all of them is that each one of these soldiers has raised his or her right hand and sworn to, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Soldiers, you have arrived at Fort Jackson, or you arrived at Fort Jackson as individuals. Some likely for adventure, others out of a sense of duty, others wanting to be part of something larger than themselves while some sought a different purpose or another direction in life. But you all answered the call to duty and leave as members of an Army Strong team. We are proud of you. We saw you all develop and grow strong. You need to be proud of what you have accomplished over the last 10 weeks. Remember, stay motivated, disciplined, and continue to live by the Army values 24 hours a day so that when our nation calls, you are ready. No one handed this to you. You have earned the privilege and the honor to call yourself a United States Army soldier. I wish you all the best in your future careers. <laughs> to our extended Army families, thank you again for your attendance, whether it be online or in person, and your tremendous support to our soldiers and nation. Families and friends, please help continue this to Please continue to help and support your new soldiers. They have become something different, something better than they were. They are now part of the greatest army in the world. Scouts out, no ground to give, victory! Today's soldier is, above all, a warrior, adaptive, confident, and competent. As a soldier, you are totally committed to the warrior ethos, grounded in Army values, and determined to destroy enemies of the United States of America and her allies. The United States Army Soldiers' Creed embodies this commitment. To the soldiers on the field, the uniform you wear at this moment is more than an outward display of your vocational choice. Your uniform is a symbol of a nation and an unspoken assurance to all who see that you are a willing and able protector of the freedoms fought so arduously for by all who have gone before and those who will bravely come after. You have become what you set out to be, a soldier in the United States Army. The Soldier's Creed is your declaration of your unshakable commitment to the ideals this nation was founded upon and will continue to guarantee. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as specialist Nathaniel Pettit presents a certificate of appreciation to the retirees and leads the soldiers standing before you through reciting the Soldier's Creed.
Soldier's Creed! I'm a soldier! I'm a warrior member of the team! I serve the people of the United States and live for our values! I will always place the mission first! I will never set the free! I will never quit! I will never leave a fallen comrade! I am disciplined, physically and mentally tough, trained in the Christian memorial test and drill! I will always maintain my arm, my equipment, and myself! I am an expert and I am a professional! I stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy the enemies of the United States of America and the close combat! I am a guardian of freedom and the American way of life! I am an American soldier! Please be seated. In consideration of those around you, we ask that you please remain seated and in the bleachers until all soldiers have passed the reviewing stand and the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. As you are approached by the American flag, it is appropriate to rise and remain standing until it has passed to your right. Once the ceremony has concluded, family members of awardees may meet their soldiers under the canopy, under the canopy located to the left of the bleachers. The 60th Infantry Regiment was organized in June 1917 at the outset of World War I from cadre furnished by the 7th U.S. Infantry. In November 1917, it was assigned to the 5th Infantry Division and underwent its baptism of fire on the Western Front. After the First World War, the 60th Infantry Regiment was inactivated in South Carolina in 1921. A generation later, in August 1940, War in Europe resulted in a rapid expansion of the, of the U.S. Army. The 60th Infantry Regiment was reactivated and assigned to the 9th Infantry Division. In 1943, during the Battle of Sejanan Valley, along the Tunisia-Algeria border, a captured German general's account of the 60th Infantry Regiment's fanatical drive through the valley was noted in his diary. He wrote, look at those devils go, and thus the 60th Infantry Regiment became, go devils. On June 11, 1944, the 60th Infantry Regiment debarked onto Utah Beach on the Continent Peninsula in Normandy, France. On June 12, 1944, driving hard to the saint Colombe in France, the 2nd Battalion, 60th Infantry Regiment, completely outdistanced the rest of the 9th Division. For a time, the unit was believed to be lost. But actually, the battalion had overrun the German defenses in the face of murderous fire and had traversed the main highway to the northwest. Instead of withdrawing, the battalion set up a bridgehead on the Douve River and held the position for seven hours until the rest of the division caught up to them, facilitating the cutting of the peninsula. Due, due to this demonstration of rapid penetration and maneuver, the Scouts Out motto originated for the battalion. Scouts Out is the official greeting of the battalion. After service as the second battle group, 60th Infantry, from 1958 to 1962, three battalions, 260th, 360th, and 560th MEC, were activated at Fort Riley, Kansas, and assigned to the 9th Infantry Division for their deployment to the Republic of Vietnam in December 1966. The division was the only major U.S. combat unit to conduct operations in the Mekong Delta. The 9th, the 9th Infantry Division was the first to be withdrawn from Vietnam and returned to the Fort Lewis, Washington in 1970, where its battalions were inactivated. Passing the reviewing stand is the commander of troops, Major Obadako, and the battalion staff.
the 282nd Army Band is commanded by First Sergeant David Newcomb. The drum major is Sergeant First Class Corey Walton. Alpha Company is commanded by Captain Jackson. First Platoon is led by First Lieutenant Morrow and is trained by Drill Sergeant Dorsey. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Campbell and is trained by Drill Sergeant Washington. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Cromer and is trained by Drill Sergeant Del Vecchio. Fourth platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Boyd and is trained by Drill Sergeant Hernandez. In the rear of the formation is the first sergeant, First Sergeant Reed. Bravo Company is commanded by Captain Cothran. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Partain and is trained by Drill Sergeant Calpo. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Buell and is trained by Drill Sergeant Green. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Bowman and is trained by Drill Sergeant McCready. Fourth platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Clay and is trained by Drill Sergeant Johnson. In the rear of the formation is the first sergeant, First Sergeant Cornwell. Charlie Company is commanded by Captain Cooper. First platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Jones and is trained by Drill Sergeant Burns. Second platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Hockey and is trained by Drill Sergeant Lambert. Third platoon is led by Drill Sergeant Woody and is trained by Drill Sergeant, Drill Sergeant Cherney. Fourth platoon is led by First Lieutenant Ong and is trained by Drill Sergeant Furness. In the rear of the formation is the first sergeant, First Sergeant Thomas. Delta Company is commanded by Captain Kemp. First platoon is led by Captain Beauchanton and is trained by Drill Sergeant Smoes. Second platoon is led by First Lieutenant
ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the Army song and please remain in the bleachers until the conclusion of the ceremony is announced. 